Patrick, you've selected Much Ado About Nothing, uh, your first production at Little Raleigh Theater. So why? Why Much Ado About Nothing? Uh, you know, Raleigh Little Theater, uh, you know, interviewing for the job and, and be, to trying to become the next artistic director, it's overwhelming. I mean, the theater's been around since 1936. I mean, one of the longest continuously running community theaters in the country. And uh, so that, that to me was uh, scary, but also really intriguing. And, you know, as a person of color, I really... I firmly believe we stand on the shoulders of our ancestors and, and that, that the history is so important to who we are now and how we make our own way in the world. And one of the things that I thought was great about this opportunity to take over at Raleigh Little Theater and the reason I chose Much Ado is because I believe that, especially with institutions that have lasted that long and who have served the community so deeply, that you have to, as a new leader, come in and preserve the things from the past that have made it last that long people, ideas, missions, all that stuff. Like you, you really gotta come in and, and stand on top of that because it's lasted for so long. But, um, you know, I knew that my slot for as my first show needed to be a classic play. I chose Much Ado because it's never been produced at Raleigh Little Theater. So while it fits into the mission and it fits into kind of the menu of shows that have happened at Raleigh Little Theater, it's also my personal addition to the theater that hasn't ever happened before. And one of the things it, during the interview process that was, um, that kind of came up as kind of a personal mantra was preserving the past through the lens of the future. And I really think with this show and what we're doing with the show and the fact that it's never been produced at the theater allows me to kind of show my respect for the past and where the theaters come from, but also point towards where we're going. For me, there's a quote, and I'm sorry I don't remember uh, who to attribute it to, but it's something that I've thought about for a long time, especially my work with Shakespeare. I love it. It's uh, the fundamental delusion of humanity is to suppose that I am here and you are out there. Right? And I think Shakespeare really did a great job of, of, of reaching out, like uh, maybe the first time in, in, in kind of the history of theater and in his writing, like Jerry's talking about personality, of reaching out and really becoming relevant to the people's lives. It wasn't just a morality tale. It wasn't just social and political commentary. It was about messiness and relationships. And, and I feel like that effort, you know, because... You know, he had people that paid a penny and threw things that they didn't like it, and he had the monarchy and all these people he engaged through this language. And so, like, really, it, 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 it kind of just spanned the whole society, which is amazing. And I think, you know, just kind of back to that question about why we update it, why we play with it, I think that that's our effort, is to really make it relevant, to continue that idea. We've put him in an academic box. Mm -hmm. So if we can make it relevant, if we can make it sing, if we can make it reach across, we dis we diminish the idea that Shakespeare is here and we are out there. Uh, yeah, that's great.